With its factory tuning and data center DNA, an Intel 730 series SSD is an amazing choice for gamers and performance enthusiasts. Welcome to part two of my coverage of Sonos's play series of network speakers. In part one, which you can view here, I covered wired setup, ease of use, the basics of their app, and the sound quality of the Play 1 and the Play 3. This time, we're gonna start with the wireless experience. Now, last time, because apparently I'm an idiot, I hooked up every single speaker separately via ethernet, thinking that you needed their bridge in order to run wirelessly or you were stuck with wired. I realize now that you actually only need to plug any one component in via ethernet and it will act as the controller while the rest will simply join a mesh style wireless network automatically so you only need to run power to them. So the bridge is meant to be a controller for folks who can't get an ethernet cable to any of their ideal speaker locations to get the mesh going, or for folks who want to extend its reach without installing random intermediate speakers between two more distance ones. Live and learn, right? <laughs> anyway. While generally I'm not a big fan of wireless networking's slow, interference-ridden, headache-inducing terribleness, Music streaming isn't terribly demanding, and Sonos' solution, which runs on the same 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequencies as Wi-Fi, but uses a proprietary communication protocol, actually works just fine. It is slower. Adding new speakers to the mesh, adjusting settings, changing volume, these are all a little bit less responsive, but it's still very tolerable and reasonably configurable. So like, if you're having interference issues, you can manually select a channel if you want, but I didn't experience any stutters, hiccups, or dropouts in my house with it on auto, and I think part of the reason for that is they have a huge buffer on the music that you're playing if you're streaming off a device. You can test this by playing something off your phone turning off your Wi-Fi and seeing how long the speaker keeps playing for. So there you go. This little white box with its two port switch is something that I'd consider handy, but very, very optional because in most cases, the wireless speaker experience is just as good without it. So let's move on to the other stuff that they sent us. Oh yeah. The Play Bar Speaker Bar is designed to let you use Sonos gear as a replacement for your TV's built-in speakers or a more traditional aftermarket setup. But just like the room speakers, the key here is going to be ease of setup. And once again, I was impressed. The software made things basically effortless. I mean, compared to my Onkyo receiver and Kef speakers, let's get this out of the way right now, Sonos' solution doesn't sound as good and actually costs about the same as I paid for that, but... The simplicity is very compelling, and it's not just simple to set up, but also to use. The play bar can be added to your mesh to play music in that room, like any other Sonos speaker. Then, unlike my multi-remote setup that my wife constantly complains about, it can be configured to automatically override wireless speaker functionality when it receives an optical signal from your TV, media PC, game console, or whatever else, so you don't have to think about it. The setup guide walks you through all these steps, including how to use your TV as a pass-through for audio from all the connected devices without using its own poopy speakers, and it also gives you some helpful tips on positioning the soundbar. And this is the point at which I noticed that their logo is the same, right side up and upside down. That blew my freaking mind. Anyway, uh, once it was set up, I was pretty happy with it. Volume control is handled seamlessly through your existing remote, and it sounds way better than your TV's stock speakers ever will. And the bass it delivers is surprisingly tight and loud. On top of that, the play bar has a magic. Give me back some of the mid-range vocal boost button when it's running on optical that I wish all of their speakers had all the time because it really makes Sonos' sound signature much more appealing to me. So there's my feature request in this video. So far so good with the play bar though, but it gets cooler than that. In the same way that you can link speakers in multiple rooms together to synchronize playback and create stereo pairs of matching speakers within one room, you can add a sub to your play bar and use software to control its behavior. Sonos recommends standing the sub upright or laying it down under a couch. And I'm beginning to sound like a broken record here, but the setup is as easy as pressing a couple of buttons. And yeah, it was easy. With that said, I didn't really feel like the sub contributed much to the experience for me. If you really want to crank things, then you'll appreciate it, but and this isn't a criticism of the sub, but rather an endorsement of the play bar at normal TV and movie listening volumes for me, 
I found that the play bar delivered ample bass on its own. The sub isn't the only thing you might want to expand though. You can add a couple of play ones too with some solid configuration options. So you can have them just join in full blast or act as ambient music enhancers when you're playing music in that room, or you can use them as surround speakers for movies. It works as well as any of their stuff. Uh, one viewer did specifically ask me to see if the play bar would work with a DTS 5.1 stream in XBMC and it handled it just fine in surround, so no complaints overall. But even if it works exactly as advertised, well, you can expand the play bar this way. I didn't find this config that compelling. I'm not the right customer in the first place. I don't have enough room behind my couch to place speakers there at all, but that's not even my main problem. Even if I had space, I don't have a power outlet there. So once again, I'm a bit disappointed by the limitation that Sonos has imposed on their gear by not giving the Play One's standard speaker inputs and maybe putting a, a beefier amp with a couple of speaker wire outputs on the Play Bar or something. This would make the unit slightly less sleek perhaps, but speaker wire is a lot easier to hide next to a baseboard than power extension cords. I mean, maybe to make things easier, a, a Play One enhanced SKU in the future could have like a power pass through so you could daisy chain them with only one of them plugged into the wall or, or something. But as it is, I doubt I'm the only one who will find a Sonos surround setup impractical, however easy it might be to configure from a software side. And I guess that's it for wireless and the home theater setup stuff. So I'm gonna conclude part two with some more general thoughts on having my house Sonos up. It's not cheap, but for me, this really is next gen. It works the way they say it does. You can stream to individual speakers, full rooms, combinations of rooms. You can adjust volume as groups or to each individual speaker within a group. Expansion is easy and it all feels so made to go together. Even something like that veiled mid-range. I might not prefer that sound, but I have to acknowledge that from the top of their speaker lineup to the bottom, they're delivering that sound signature consistently. So at least when I order something from Sonos, I know what to expect. And a big benefit here is that as I walk from room to room, it's not jarring to hear something, the same music, but playing very differently as I move around my house. I think really at this point, the only thing missing for me is to add more options to the lineup. I'd love to see some better sounding speakers, some more uh, purpose-built ones, like maybe a weather resistant outdoor speaker, for example, but that's all I really have to say. Other than that, I wholeheartedly recommend Sonos's ecosystem. It's not perfect. Like anything easy, it's not the best sounding, it's not the cheapest, but it just works. And I even got wife approval on it. And at the end of the day, that's the bottom line for new tech gadgets, isn't it? <laughs> All right, guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on Sonos. Have you ever tried it? Do you have positive comments on it? Do you have negative comments on it? Leave, leave those comments uh, in the video description. You'll find our support link where you can give us a monthly contribution. You can buy a sweet t-shirt like the one that I'm wearing right now. We actually have some other really cool designs right now too. Go check those out. And you can change your Amazon bookmark to one that has our affiliate code in it. So whenever you just navigate there and buy stuff, we get a small kickback. That kind of stuff helps us out a lot. Thanks again for watching guys. As always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.